Sonic the Hedgehog, the first one from 1991 for the Sega Genesis. It's hard to imagine the Genesis without Sonic, but for the first year or two, the Genesis was without its favorite blue hedgehog. The original pack-in game was Altered Beast. For us old-school original owners, the strength of the Genesis was how cool it was in games like Revenge of Shinobi and Herzog Zwei. But then came Sonic, and then came the popularity. Sonic offered a game that was arguably as good, if not better, than Super Mario Bros. And it looked completely different and stood out. While Super Mario Bros. is a fun, colorful series, Sonic is ridiculously vibrant and manages to pack every color in the rainbow onto screen at once without seeming cluttered. That's impressive art design. Also, he had more of an attitude which was made to appeal to Sega's slightly older demographic back in the day. An attitude which has since gone. But back then, when you didn't move Sonic, he'd look at you and tap his foot. He seemed to just be a cool dude. He was impatient and always in a rush. Sonic now appears in kids' games with Mario. So what happened? Did it all go wrong, or is this just a giant blast of nostalgia? Because I think the first Sonic the Hedgehog is still the best. And fortunately, it can be purchased for little or no money these days. The version we're watching here is off of Sonic's Ultimate Collection for the PlayStation 3, which is the version I'll recommend because it's also affordable and packs numerous other Sonic games. What's so special about Sonic anyway? Well, as I'm reviewing this, the game is about two decades old. As you can see, I don't remember the levels all that well. The key to Sonic the Hedgehog, though, to, to, to play and explore is to always have one ring on you, at least one ring. That prevents you from losing a life as you're exploring these beautiful, well-designed 2D levels. Has Sonic ever benefited from going to 3D? I don't think so. I think he looks good right here. Much of the things that make Sonic the Hedgehog an excellent game also make Super Mario Bros. an excellent game. They share a lot in common when you actually play them back to back. Gameplay styles might be slightly different. Sonic is somewhat easier to control in a way. And the levels aren't just about getting from point A to point B, they're about getting from point A to point B while also mastering some racing lines to get you there quickly and collect all of the rings. While this is a console game, it feels like a Sega arcade game. It's easy to pick up and play, hard to master. It's not that hard to get through the game, but it's very difficult to get through the game collecting a number of rings, the vast majority of rings, as well as Chaos Emeralds, and scoring points. As you see, if you get hit, you lose your rings. Sonic can be played with a lot of precision, which I'm not doing here. <laughs> You're being scored in a variety of ways, everything from collecting rings to uh, how quickly you can complete the levels, collecting chaos emeralds, and defeating bad guys. There's numerous hidden things and one-ups and power-ups and shields all over the place, and it's a remarkably charming game. Back in the day, there had to be this competition between Mario and Sonic. Now, I would say if you enjoy Mario, you should try the earlier Sonic games, and vice versa. If you can put yourself back into 1991, I think you can see why this game was so groundbreaking. It's just so vibrant and colorful compared to its 8-bit competition, and remarkably well-made. And what we're watching during this gameplay is me remembering the levels, because you could explore them almost indefinitely. So you could play the game for points, you can play the game for speed and collecting chaos emeralds and actually playing the game, or you could explore and just find what's out there collect all the one-ups and the shields, and then get all of the continues, and actually play the game that way, taking more time to do it. So it's a side-scroller that packed some real replay value, which was not common for 1980s arcade games made to get you on and off the machine quickly, so you put in more quarters. Sonic was a platformer for a home console. You could take a lot of time to play Sonic. And obviously Sonic is still around these days, he's Sega's mascot, but I want viewers to remember a time when Sonic was not just a Me Too character. He's not just a blue Mario. He's not just a marketing image, which is how he's predominantly used now. You can put any character into a cart or on skis and make a silly fun game, but in order to play Sonic the Hedgehog, you needed Sonic the Hedgehog. You have to turn into a ball and go through chutes and bounce off springs. 
You need that attitude from Sonic the Hedgehog. Nobody else could have played this game. No other character. Not even Shinobi. Although he would have had a very different approach to this game. Which I'd like to see. Stabbing Dr. Robotnik in the head in the first level. Ending it right there. There's a lot of Sonic games out there. I'm partial to the older ones, even though I'm not even a huge fan of side-scrolling platformers. There's something just immensely enjoyable and likable about Sonic the Hedgehog games. When you played Sonic the Hedgehog games, you knew it was a Sega game. You were playing a game that was fast, colorful, well-made, and controllable. Sonic accurately represented Sega's image at the time. And for many of us, he still does. So play the first one. It's available on just about every game console out there. You can also find it for the Sega Master System and the Game Gear, although I'll recommend the Genesis version, and now the version on Sonic's Ultimate Collection. So I'm working on getting my gameplay back into Sonic. I want to play all the games again. It's been a while. The Sonic review following this one will be for Sonic CD. So when you see Sonic goofing off, smiling, doing things other video game characters can do, just remember he's a badass guy and only Sonic could play Sonic. I mean, Shinobi can play Sonic, but it's just a complete bloodbath. Here we go. Instead of drowning him, let's have him smashed with a ball and chain. Sorry. Well, he'll be there the next time I play. It's not like he goes away forever. <laughs>